In this video, we're going to introduce regulators, which is the last stage of the power supplies. And we'll see the categorization of regulators. And we will touch base upon the xenodiode characteristics and how it can be used as a voltage regulator. Let's see what is expected out of a regulator. Here at the input of the regulator, we are showing unregulated supply voltage or the fluctuating output of filter where we can see that the voltage is changing in between Vmin and Vmax. But our expectation out of regulator is to get us an output which is constant, which is DC as shown here. Now we can say regulator is an electronic circuit which maintains the DC output voltage of a power supply constant irrespective of the fluctuations in AC supply that are shown at the input and variations in load current because of changes in the load. So let me write that down here. Regulators can be classified into broadly two categories. One is linear regulators and the other one is nonlinear regulators. This is divided based on the active devices region of operation. In linear regulators, the transistor will be used in linear region of operation, whereas in nonlinear regulators will be using the transistors in cutoff and saturation modes of operation. And in fact, nonlinear regulators are used in switch mode power supplies. So we can say this is for switching regulators. And in fact, in this course, we are more concentrated on linear power supplies, which means we'll be discussing mostly on linear regulators. So a linear regulator can be built with discrete components like xenodiodes, BJTs, MOSFETs and resistors components together. So we can say this is divided into discrete component based regulator and the other one is based on integrated circuit regulator where we'll be using integrated circuits to build the regulator. In discrete regulators we have two subcategories. One is shunt regulator and the other one is series regulator. In IC regulators we have fixed voltage IC regulators and adjustable voltage regulators or adjustable voltage IC regulators. Our concentration is about linear regulators as we're talking about linear power supplies and that too we spend most of our time in discrete component based regulators. We'll see both shunt and series type regulators. Now we will move and touch upon the xenodiode characteristics and how it can be used as a voltage regulator. Circuit symbol of a xenodiode is shown here and its current voltage characteristics shown here. We call the voltage at which the current in the reverse bias abruptly increases as breakdown voltage. But as we have seen in electronic devices, the breakdown mechanism is not the damaging mechanism for the diode. It's the resulting current which goes beyond a limit can damage the device. So which means when we operate in the breakdown region for a Zena diode, it's not going to be a problem, but any diode comes with a power rating. Let's say the power rating for this diode is some value, the maximum power rating. This power rating will be equal to voltage times the maximum current. Because when we look at the breakdown region, at breakdown region, we have a breakdown voltage. So for Zena diode, the breakdown voltage is called Vz. When we operate in the breakdown region, the voltage is going to be Vz itself, but the current will be changing. So the amount of current that can flow maximum can be found from this. Because when we look at it, we can get what is the power rating of the diode from the spec sheet. And we know what is the Zener voltage. And we can find this quantity based on this equation. So which means there is a cap or limit on the maximum current that can flow through the Zener diode in reverse bias. So let me call that value, let's say, this is IZ max, that's a maximum reverse bias current that can flow through the Zener diode. And we also say that there is a minimum current, IZ min. This is mainly for the reason that we are at a breakdown voltage. So when we bias the 
zener diode around the breakdown voltage we have to make sure that we are within this range so that the voltage across the diode would remain fairly constant so we can draw the equivalent circuit diagram for the zener diode when it is operated in the breakdown region so we can say that it is a series zener resistor and a voltage representing vz this is equal to a zener diode shown here rz is present because there is a finite slope for this which is not a straight line in fact going down hence for simplicity we assume at times that rz is zero and it can be modeled completely with simply a voltage source here but you have to keep in mind that this voltage source is not a source which can supply current it is going to absorb current because this is a passive device when we are operating in the breakdown region it is going to consume or absorb or sink the current through the diode but the biggest advantage that comes from zener diode is even though the current is changing all the way from iz min to iz max the voltage across the diode is fairly constant which is vz that's the thing which is really required for a regulator when there are fluctuations at the input voltage we are still supposed to get a constant output voltage which means the extra current that flows should be synced without taking extra voltage this is where zener diode comes into play so having seen this now let's see how this can be utilized now we have seen at the output of the filter we have unregulated supply voltage or fluctuating dc output of filter that can be represented with a power supply like this where the vs is changing which is in between v min to v max now at the other end we have a zener diode where the current flowing through the zener diode let's say is iz if you can make sure iz is in between iz min in fact iz min is also called as i ni which is ni current and where iz is less than iz max to make sure the diode doesn't get damaged if you can make sure that iz is in between these values the voltage across the diode will be constant which we can say will be vz which is a constant value neglecting the zener resistance but how do we make sure that the current actually flows only between these two limits for a change in voltage at the input which is vs in order to control that we need to have a current limiting resistor so this resistance value is going to control how much current flows through the zener diode our intention is to make sure that the current flowing through the zener diode is always in between these values so that the voltage across the zener diode will remain fairly constant now as we just assume that we are going to make sure the zener diode will be biased in such a way the iz will be in between these two limits the voltage here will be vz it's not going to change in that case how much current flows through this circuit for variation of vs is now the current here is let's say is now let's find what is 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 equal to vs minus vz over rs out of these values rs is a fixed quantity and vz is also fixed once we choose this inner diode vz is going to be fixed now the varying quantities are vs varies from a minimum value to maximum value and similarly even is will change because the voltage is changing in this circuit iz is equal to is so the change in is is in such a way that iz changes within the limits specified here so that the voltage across the zener diode will remain vz so we can say here that is min will be equal to vs min minus vz over rs whereas is max is equal to vs max minus vz over rs this equations extreme quantities are taken here is max and is min now as we are saying is should be in between is min and is max and as we know iz has limits as well 
as iz is equal to is both should be satisfying the equations but of course this is not the complete circuit because we haven't considered the load connected here which is the load resistor in the next videos we will see what happens to the circuit and how it functions when a load resistor is connected across the zener diode if you like the video please give a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please do subscribe and thank you for watching